This man who was sitting on the rock, Khidr alayhi salam, he was sitting on a rock because he's not sitting on the shifting sand. He doesn't change his opinion to suit the way the wind is blowing so that his name does not go on a no-fly list. You know, so that his business is not threatened. Hmm? So that the world does not say he's a terrorist. No, he doesn't care. He doesn't care for that. He's firm like a rock. You can't shake him. Not even with a bulldozer. That's the kind of scholar you need. In Akhir was a man, not the one who is concerned about maybe I lose my salary, I lose my job, I lose my promotion. Eh? The fellow who is preparing the paycheck might not prepare it for me if I give a wrong khutbah. He sits on a rock. That's the scholar you need. If you want to penetrate Akhir was a man. More than that, Musa alayhi salam, you know where to find him? You'll find him at Majma'ul Bahrain. You'll find him at the place where the two oceans meet. Is it Atlantic and Pacific? No. <laughs> this is Mutashabiha. The two oceans are the ocean of knowledge externally acquired and that you get from the universities and the ocean of knowledge which is internally received and that you'll only get if Allah puts nur in your heart and nur is not sold in the stock market and you cannot have nur in your heart if you tell lies monstrous lies shameless lies these people got PhD in telling lies uh, they started long before 9-11 when 9-11 took place I said well you know there are three kinds of lies there are normal lies and then there are great lies and then there's 9-11 I thought I thought this was the biggest lie of all. But they've been constantly lying, constantly lying, shamelessly lying. And then go to church on Sunday morning and pretend to be a civilized people. So this man is to be found at the place where the two oceans meet. Majma'ul Bahrain. The ocean of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge internally received. And if you want to get knowledge internally, you must have noor in the heart. And that noor comes only when there is sincerity in the heart. The heart must be for Allah. There's a beautiful hadith, my teacher, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah gave it to us. That Allah's messenger said, you must memorize it. Man kana lillah, kana Allahu lahu. Whosoever is for Allah, Allah is for him, Allah is for her. Man kana lillahi, kana Allahu lahu. In addition to that, the one who will receive noor from Allah must direct attention to establishing a proper relationship with Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam because he is noor. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ There has come to you from Allah a noor and this book, a nur, and this book. So Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is nur. 
follow him. Be careful. Don't part company from him. Because if you step away from him, you're going to lose Noor. And on, finally, if you want Noor, you've got to go to the Quran. Allah is Nurus Samawati Wal Ard. And the Quran is the Kalam of Allah. So every word in the Quran is a window to Nur. If you're not reciting the Quran every day and completing the entire Quran from cover to cover at least once a month, how can you expect Nur? Not only does this man have the two oceans of knowledge, but more than that, it is Majma'ul Bahrain. The two oceans come together to be harmoniously integrated. I don't think any university can do that. <laughs> no. That you have two oceans of knowledge and the two oceans come together to be harmoniously integrated as a whole. That is the most learned of all men. Khidr alayhi salam. So not only did the angel come to tell us how important is eschatology or ilmu akhir is the man. The angel also came to tell us what is the way. What is the method for studying the subject. When we look at the world today, we find, as I said earlier, that it is a unique world. There's never been a dunya like this before. And the most puzzling thing about this dunya today, and I have to speed up a little bit now, is that there is an actor at work on the stage of the world and he is an actor who seems to have come out of nowhere we had great civilizations Babylon was a great civilization the Aztecs in Mexico a great civilization China a great civilization where did this fellow come from? The Christian world, the Hindu world, the Buddhist world, the Muslim world, great civilizations came to the world. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, an actor appears. And he takes control of the world. Who is he? Is this happening by accident? He has a power that none can resist. He brings a scientific and technological revolution, which when applied to military science, gives him unprecedented power. No longer is he dependent on the wind for a ship to sail. <laughs> no. He now has nuclear-powered ships. He doesn't travel by horses anymore. He has mechanical transport on land. He has motor cars. He has trains to take goods a long distance, which yesterday was camels. This fellow even travels in the sky. We never had it before. He has a, 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 an aeroplane that flies in the sky. He doesn't need a sword anymore to fight. He can kill you from a distance. Huh? Strange. He has unprecedented power, military power. But unlike Zulkarnain, who had faith and who used power, so little Kef? Huh? Surat al-Kaf? You must shake your head a little bit. Surat al-Kaf? Zulkarnain used power 
to punish the oppressor and to bring relief to the oppressed. And Zulkarnain used power to help those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct and to reward them. But this fellow is the opposite of Zulkarnain. This fellow is essentially godless, essentially godless. And he uses his unprecedented power to oppress like no oppressor has ever been. And he uses his unprecedented power to target those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct. It doesn't matter whether you are Christian or Muslim or Jew or Hindu or a Buddhist. It doesn't matter. Once you want to be truthful, once you have integrity and you will stand up for the truth, once you are righteous in your conduct, this man is coming after you. Who is he? He comes and uses his power to oppress and he wants to take control of the whole world. In Mr. In Mr. Putin's beautiful expression, Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, he said about this man, he has imperial ambitions, which is very dignified language. He wants to rule the world. This fellow embarks upon an effort to rule the world. But we find him moving through three stages. And I gave this lecture right here in this surah just before Ramadan. And Allah spoke about it in the Quran in Suratul Mursalat. 